All right. Mayor Kingston, members of council, um, thank you. And we just wanted to provide, um, as we had talked about previously, um, some information on, um, again, we've, we've talked about it in greater detail now, but just some information on what we're seeing and um, any thoughts we have as to how that relates to some of our ordinances, particularly those involving the consideration of dune walkovers. So I was going to start just by doing a quick roll. I, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time because you've heard this on a couple of occasions already within the last handful of months. So um, I'm going to start it and we'll turn it over to Sandy to talk about some of the current trends and what we're seeing. So again, um, we were looking at pre-nourishment. Um, we were looking at these steeper slopes that you still see on a, a lot of the, along you know, the dune on the east side, throughout a lot of our beach here in Duck. And you can see, uh, you know, the use of uh, you know, a dune walkover stairways are not uncommon at all due to the, the steepness of those dunes. So when the project was built, we ended up with a dune, you know, this would be a typical dune profile, 20 feet in height, going down at about a one to five slope down to a beach that was at an elevation of about six feet. So that's what that looked like in practice toward the end of the project there. So some of the things that were, were looked at by planning board and council at that time, um, these were some of the issues that were looked at being addressed in some form or fashion, um, limiting traffic over the dunes so it could stabilize, as well as looking at um, mobility, particularly for people who might have um, or might be more challenging for them to access a uh, uh, you know, on that one to five slope. So these are the standards that were adopted. Um, again, no allowance for any hardened structures, but does allow a beach matting to go across the top of the dune and down the east side all the way to the, the toe. So that's an idea of what that looks like in practice there. And again, down in the bottom right corner there, you can see what that would look like from an aerial view as far as what, would, what is permitted presently. Um, just a few quick looks here at, you know, what an example of this in, in the field. And these are some of the communities that have used the beach access matting. And that photo was at Mallard Drive. Okay. All right, so um, subsequent to that, there was um, some additional discussion about, um, yeah, there were some concerns brought up in the community and issues discussed about ADA accessibility, limited mobility, again, um, the issue of um, keeping people from walking over the face of the dune as they came on, you know, kind of directing them downward, again, to help with this stability as the, the dune um, stabilizes over time. And some of the concepts that were looked at then were freestanding railings, post and rope supports, um, other types of things here that are really the main intent here is again just to guide people down within a certain area at a beach access. So um, so anyway, that's we, and it, this was uh, something we had for you before in terms of looking at this. So right now in the, the column all the way to the right, the only option that the town allows presently within, and again, this is just within the beach nourishment area, um, is that beach access matting. So that was the, the decision that was made in the fall. And we talked about revisiting that at this point as we took a look at um, what was happening with the beach and the dune and to see if there were other things that the um, council felt were necessary to accommodate people in a, in a reasonable manner. And with that, I'll turn it over. So. So fortunate for me, Julian did a lot of my work already. <laughs> um, 
what I, I'm telling you what I've seen visually, um, we have seen sand accumulation on both the dune slope and the berm, and I'm going to show you a couple pictures that'll show the, the accumulation on the berm as well as the dune. Um, we have installed two rows of sand fencing. Um, we've got a row of beach planting on the easternmost side of the eastern sand fencing, and then through the volunteer program, we're also planting near the uh, the middle of the first row of sand fencing, and that's been a pretty big success, as you all know. Um, what you're going to see as I go through these slides is that there's kind of like this this bump or a, a kind of a increased slope at the um, the eastern edge of the second row of sand fencing, which is going to make it kind of difficult to walk down. Um, so we, um, as staff, talked about it and how we would best address it, and we've also talked to CAMA about possibly knocking or modifying that grade so we get back to a one to five slope so people can actually walk it or use the beach access matting. Um, as far as the winter storm Grayson, uh, the nourishment area fared fairly well. There was some weird formations that formed, but um, overall we've been out there three times to get video, and I would say that it did well. And Merrick can attest to that. I should give you the... You should have this too. <laughs> say yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't abuse that. <laughs> so um, we briefly ran through this earlier. Um, I've added some drawings to it, and uh, just to show you what we're seeing at the top of the dune, that little bump where we've got the first row of sand fencing, and then the second row of sand fencing, we've, we've seen a huge amount of accumulation from the, the, since the winter storm Grayson, and I'm going to show you a transition of how, those, how that area has changed. So we've got two small frontal, dorm, do, frontal dunes forming um, from the blowing sand. Um, we've got a higher burn profile in most of the nourishment area. It was interesting that Julian pointed out that the southern part of the nourishment area, they saw a little uh, loss in the berm area. And when I pulled pictures for Snow Geese South, because that was one of my monitor areas, I went back and I'm like, well, this is not any higher, so I'm not going to use this picture. Um, but overall, in the areas north of that area, uh, north of Snow Geese and Spindrift area, we are seeing a higher burn profile visually. Um, but that second dune formation, the one that's more east, um, that's definitely got a, a better, a, a higher slope that's um, a little hard to traverse. So just to show you a little bit about the sand accumulation on the berm, we've got the picture from October 4th where the sign, you can see the R in Oyster Catcher, and this was just taken on the 19th. Um, you can't see the E or the R now, and that's probably a lot to do with Winter Storm Grayson. Um, just to show you some of the things that we've done, we've got the contracted beach planting, which you'll see is on the eastern side of the second row of sand fencing. And then this is just some portions of um, the volunteer-based beach planting, which we're putting below or midway down the, second, the first row of sand fencing and bet between the second row. And at the access points, we're actually taking a line to the second row to keep people from walking between the sand fence rows. Um, this is just a progression of the sand fencing from June. Um, that was the first row of fencing that went in. And then you'll see on the lower picture, Mallard Drive was December 14th, and you'll see how there's no sand accumulated between that sand fencing. And then I didn't have one at Mallard Drive, but I did have one at Flight Drive, which is a pretty good example of what's happened at that second row of sand fencing. So it's building up about uh, three and a half feet on the western side and then sloping down. Um, this is an example of oyster catcher back in October, um, and, and the folks to the north of the oyster catcher access installed a, a lot of sand fencing in addition to what we did. And you'll see that there's, um, there's been a lot of build up there. Um, again, we've got a picture from October 4th, and then just on the 19th, you can see how that whole north side of their access has filled in. So questions for council. Um, we have a current standard, and there was discussion when we adopted this standard that we'd come back and revisit it at the retreat and decide how we're going to proceed, whether we're going to stick with the same standard or implement other standards. So um, I pose to you whether you want to reconsider hardened structures, um, which would definitely require an ordinance amendment and sending it to planning board and then back to you all. 
And we also have the option to reconsider post and rail or post and rope options. I know the discussion with regard to post and rail and post and rail, a lot of people just didn't want to do anything at, that, at the time we discussed it. Um, so that's an option to discuss. And that would also require ordinance amendments. Uh, whether you want to do more fencing, more planting. I know that I've, I've been told that there's definitely a desire to continue the volunteer-based program, um, which we'll do as long as we can with the beach grass and then hopefully carry it into the spring with some sea oats. Um, from a staff perspective, um, we think that maintaining the current standards is probably a good idea. Um, once we put hardened structures out there, if we do have some erosion, it's going to be hard to get them out. And we've got about, so we still have about 60 feet down the front of that slope. Um, and so that's going to make a, a difficult, it's going to be a difficult task to have that removed if we have erosion. Uh, we do believe that we can modify the grade of the frontal dune slope at the community and individual private accesses to maintain a gentler slope. Um, our discussions with CAMA will allow that. And we have actually run a test run, um, still tweaking it, but we think it's manageable. Um, and obviously continue regular monitoring the situation because if something substantial changes, we would need to revisit this. But with regard to the, that, that steeper slope that we're seeing from that sand, the sand fencing, so flight drive to the left, and this is not a really good pictorial, but if you go back to the one where we had the <laughs> side view of the sand fencing, this one right here, you can see that second row of sand fencing, how that drops off pretty quickly. So what we are proposing is to take that, that drop off and bring it down modify the slope so that it ends up looking more like you see on the right, um, which Mayor can probably speak to a little bit better about how we actually accomplish that. But um, basically we're just going to pull that bump down and flatten it out so that we get back to that one to five slope. And that's where, uh, oops, that's where we're at. And so the questions are all in your hands right now. Can you put the question slide back up since yeah. we're going to talk about it? Thank you. Sandy, we, we signed the ordinance last July. We went through the summer and into the fall. What comments do we get in town with respect to the access? I think probably the most common was I have sand building up and I can't get my pool fence open, um, which we can deal with um, because on the west side of the, if the build up, they can put steps up to the dune and they might have to modify their, their access to their pool area. But I think that's been the most common. Um, we have had obviously some discussions, Carolina dunes were, were probably one of the most prevalent about um, mobility access, um, which, you know, once we got through this, we were almost done the season. So everybody kind of let's, let's take a wait and see approach. Um, I've been out to the Mallard Drive access, and they left their sand fencing out. And, I, I, you know, I, I think it's walkable. I think um, council probably needs to walk it and, and go from there to see whether you think that's feasible for people. Um, we also have Surf Rescue, who has repeatedly offered that if people need help getting to the beach, they're able to do that. Um, you know, are they going to be instantaneously and immediate? You know, you're going to have to arrange with them to make that happen. But I think that. You know, when we're talking about this magnitude of a project and still having equilibration occurring, and we talk about hardened structures, we kind of have to tread lightly, I would think. <laughs> Question, for Sandy, on the, uh, I appreciate it personally, the recommendations by the staff since you're kind of living and breathing it, but I was a little surprised that you're recommending um, altering the stuff that's happening kind of naturally. Well, I would only do that at the accesses. But that's when you think about accesses and community versus private, and you get into that whole thing about. Well, and we talked about that as well. I think if we only limit it to community accesses, then we're opening ourselves up for some inconsistencies with how it's applied. Right. So, um, so, so my point is that I was surprised that you would think about messing around with the natural um, equilibration. Well, just to, to sort of clarify some of that thought process, the way that it, it's evolving right now, the concern was that if, if we didn't 
if we didn't come up with some way to address it, that there was going to be a real push to put hardened structures, because in order to get over that hump, the best way to do that w would probably be stairs. And, and so this was a way to sort of say, okay, um, you know, we're, we're not, we're, we're doing something that we think is going to be less of, we're offering something that's going to be less um, damaging to the dune long term than, um, than stairs. How about, um, and this is just throwing it out for discussion, but if we're worried about accessibility and we had the conversation, had a good thorough conversation about the different options, um, you know, people were saying the rope and the, uh, but I, I think that if we were going to try to get, so people could hold on to something, that a few posts in this one side with a hard um, rail, where people really need it seems a lot less invasive than moving around sand. That, that's just me personally, like just stick a few posts in. They're going to probably get buried and up and down like we've seen. I will say that I was, I could get down it easily, but walking back up it is difficult. And I, with a rail. Well, what, what you get, still me if I'm wrong, you'll get, if you've got a post rope, the sand's going to move, and you have parts where the sand is exactly. a few inches off the ground, then it probably was a few feet oh, yeah. off, because it's, it's, I don't think it would really fix it. It's well, too steep. I put sand there, and like, you know, the sand's going to move, so you got a rope. Got no, no rope, rope, no rope. I was no thinking, rope. no, you got to hold on to something and pull yourself. But I mean, it, again, I mean, I think John makes a good point. Levels, it's going to vary in level to you. We, we, we set an objective. It's, yeah. You to, have to crawl. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. If we you actually look at the, no, I'm sorry, go ahead. to trap sand and not have it end up in everybody's yard and off the beach, and we're meeting that objective. Now, I, I don't think we want to change that. And when I think about it, I say, okay, that means that we're probably going to continue to build height in the dune over time. It's going to bury the sand fencing we got, and then we're going to be faced with, do we want to put more sand fencing in because now the sand's going to start blowing in everybody's yard? If that's the case, then it would seem to me that once it reaches a given height, we allow some kind of structure for people to walk over and down until they're back down to the gentle slope. And that way, we continue to create an environment of catching sand, and we continue to build that dune. And I think that's what we really have to decide for the future. Do we really want to trap the sand, or do we, because we're going to be digging out sand forever if we follow the approach of leveling it out. You'll level it, and in six months, you're going to have the same problem again. But the summer months, will get it knocked down as well. Like, they're, the summer months are going to keep it knocked down. What we're dealing with is we're dealing with winter blow and sand accumulation, and we're going to roll into the season with a three-to-one slope, and trust me, we're going to have phone calls from people saying, I need steps. And the question then becomes, do you want steps out on the nourished beach? Because the way our ordinance currently reads, they could take their steps Okay. If we apply the, the ordinance as it stands outside of the nursery area, they could have steps that are 60 feet long. Yeah. 63, actually, approximately. First of all, wouldn't you need like at least the 20 feet over the dune? Plus, yes. Then you'd need more ramp to get to the other yes. secondary dune, yes. the new dune, and then down, right? So you're talking about a lot of construction. Yes. Hey, Ken, Ken, I have a question for Ken. Is it fair to think that during this equilibration process as the beach gets more, this is probably the winter we're going to have the most blowing sand? I mean, I... We got a big deal. I mean, you know, because we lost, we had a 250-foot beach. Give them the mic. Before, so, less sand. I mean, it was a different project than Nags Head, but I, I think, you know, going into the second year and the third year that they, they were still dealing with some pretty substantial issues down there with blowing sand. So um, I think this is probably something that, you know, we'll have to watch for years to come. So much for that easy out. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, <laughs> in, I, in that particular, in the, in the particular area we're talking about in Flight Drive, if you actually go out to the access and look west of the sand fence, you will see a lot of sand accreting 
15, 20, 30 feet out across the dune to the west. So there is a lot of sand actually going past the sand fence, and that was one of the things that we discussed. It's going to be evolving consistently throughout this. Nags Head was way behind the mark. Um, not to put them down, but they just didn't expect that kind of sand transport, that sediment transport across a dune with pools being completely filled in, houses having sand 15 feet up the side of the house to where they had to get excavators and bulldozers to clear by the side of the house. So, so we're trying to stay ahead of that with the sand fence and also the beach grass. And then this would also be one more, more way of keeping that from uh, building up is to be pulling out those accesses. There are about 100 accesses, and you have to start thinking, do we want 100 sets of steps to start being built up? And, and the one to three slope that I measured manually is uh, kind of... Um, Two and a half. It, it, it's more like a cam in that it, it, cre it starts out slowly and then it slowly comes down and then all of a sudden it's a lot steeper. So it's more like a one to two and the closer you get to zero, the more you get into a straight line. So that's a, a complete escarpment. So you, you have to look at it that way and that we're trying to keep, maintain that one to five for a safety factor or then you will be doing stairs. And it's gonna come back. Yeah, yeah it's, it's already come back. Just, just in a few days that we, we cleared the one spot, just the next day, Sandy said, oh, this doesn't look as bad as I thought it looked the first day. <laughs> and, and it didn't because there was more sand being, well, you know. that, that, that was my point, is we're, we're facing that we're going to have to trap sand. Otherwise, we're going to lose it into yards. And that's what we started to do. We've now done it very successfully, too successful. It's up on top and it's creating a slope we, problem. We probably need to put sand fencing Pardon? further east. We'll and, see. And, yeah. further Go east. ahead, Chuck. I'm sorry. Well, I, I think we have to decide first, is that going to be our continuing objective? Because if it is, once the sand fence gets buried where it is, we're going to have to put another set of sand fencing up. Otherwise, we're, we're, we're going to just let the rest of it go. If that's our objective, then what's the best way for the long term to get people up and over the hump and down to where they can walk down again. And I mean, I, uh, Merrick and I would probably both agree that, you know, minor grading of these areas is painless Pardon? because the sand's not, we're not taking the sand off the beach. It's coming back. Can you describe what minor grading is, just what you would do? Because you said you were, had an idea of it just so I can visualize it. I'm having trouble figuring out, are we going west to east and pushing it back well, on the beach, or are we, where, what are we doing there? You're really just pulling the sand, you're taking that hump and pulling it down the beach. And it raises the, the, the dune itself maybe about three or four inches, 20 feet out in front of that dune line. Um, kind of like a reverse push. Yeah. Instead of pushing I, it up, we're... I, I'm trying to... So you're actually taking like a, a front-end loader and scooping it this way and well, going... The, just the test, the test was we use a tractor, and I've talked to um, another land developer, and, and we feel like the best way to do it would be to use an excavator and a, a mini-track loader just to the excavator to move the, the majority of the sand and then the track loader just to come in and smooth it out. The excavators run Yeah, correct. Okay. But you're saying so basically you're going to take a claw, claw and go shh. You have to remember the, 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 dunes, the dunes were built by large equipment rolling over top of them. And, yeah, and we, we forget that sort of thing and that's not what, that's not really what tears up the dune and what tears up the dune is, is mother nature. And that's what we're constantly fighting. That's why we're here so talking by, about this. So by clawing out, and I'm sorry to be so dumb, I just no, need to okay. try to visualize it. So you get the p equipment out, you're going to the access points, wherever you might do them, community and or owner requested. Hello. We probably will do all, all the ones that need an adjustment. So we would decide what needed the adjusting. We would be the determining factor. But we're, hey, we're, you need it, but you don't. Yeah, we're looking at it, we're looking at maintaining that one to five slope. So then you just go out with the thing, decide which ones you're going to do, and then you're just pulling down the sand, and it'll last maybe a month, 
Well, I mean, with the summer months coming in, it should maintain throughout the season. And then we're probably going to have the same build up over the winter and look at it again the following year. Your, your foot traffic's going to take care of that during the right. summer. Tons. And that's, yeah. that's what we're looking at is doing it right before those summer months. Foot and traffic will knock it all down. And it would give them a path that they would go on, too. Sandy, can the same, yeah, I mean, if if you if you sorry, if okay. you envision someone, you know, coming in that where that um, I believe it's 20, um, where that hump is, you know, the concern is with you with someone walking over, and then you have that. That yeah, like the red, down. the red hump is what we're talking about. We're talking about taking that red hump and just flattening it. Just pushing it down the dune. Yeah. Flat. Yeah, not humps. not removing the sand, yeah, just pushing, pushing, pushing it down, down, down. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and sort of keeping that that area open at a at a reasonable. We probably slope. do it right before Easter. Okay. Both red humps. Start hitting less north winds too. Once we get. You have two red humps up there. Both of them. No, just no. The the, the western dune is not nearly as is not formed as nearly as much, um, and I honestly think maybe maybe this is just an impact from winter storm Grayson, and we won't see quite substantial um, buildup. But there's that concern that, you know, if it doesn't knock down before the season, what do we do when people start calling and saying, I want to put steps in? Well, well you that, can't. That's my question. So can you achieve the solution that you'd like to see by just manipulating some of the sand fencing? That's a good question. Sand, the, the, I mean, my experience with snow fence was it was an exercise in insanity for a while until you got the right spot. And then it was mostly okay until that one bad storm and it's all in front of your front door. So I don't know how fast it's taken for it to accumulate that. Well, here's a good example. Um, this is not the exact same location, but you're, we're seeing a similar uh, appearance in a large part of the northern nourishment area. That was Mallard Drive and Flight Drive is just north of Mallard Drive, uh, maybe, what, six or seven accesses? So in December, we didn't have any buildup between that sand fencing, and in February, we have three and a half feet. Right. So, and then if you look at areas like this, where, you know, there was no, there's no, there's no sand here. Right. In October. And now it's completely filled in in February. <laughs> so I wish yeah. I, I had things. I wish I had. There is no. I, there I, is some, no some places, answer. and it depends, right. depends on the sand content. Like yeah. we've got the bar area A and bar area C, and the finer sand is moving a lot differently than the, the coarser sand. So are we seeing the same exact problem at Spindrift? No. I mean, and, and, and snow geese, it's a little, it's a little gentler slope, all, so we may not need to do it all over the place, but this finer sand is definitely moving at a different rate, different capacity. Ken or Julian, have you seen this issue before and how other towns may have dealt with it? No, I, I mean, the, the highest, the highest wind energy and, you know, the, the biggest issue with trying to trap the sand and keep it on the beach. My experience has all been up here in the Outer Banks. I mean, watching watching the other folks deal with it down in Nags Head and a lot of discussions with a lot of folks that had ideas before the project and now watching these three projects go in. Every project, I mean, has sand fencing and has windblown sand, but not to this extent. I mean, this is certainly... Is, is that, that because the highest, it's the finer sand? But we, um, more with, to do with the, uh, just the wind energy. Be a phenomenon. We, more we to deal with what? We have a lot of wind and we more. have a lot of side shore wind. Exactly. That's, that's, that's yeah, I mean, we have that year round. You know, and I'll give you an example. We planted Diane Street in November, and I went back to Diane Street like two weeks later, and the, the plants were almost completely covered. I went back there two weeks later, and the plants are all exposed again. So the sand is moving. It's just like there's no real rhyme or reason um, other than I do we do see that the areas that have more sand fencing like oyster catcher on either side the owners have, have added sand fencing to what we've done 149 Bufflehead has about four rows of sand fencing their sand fe their sand fencing is catching the sand lower down on the dune closer to the berm than higher up on the dune 
And so that's something to keep in mind. Like if we wanted to do another row of sand fencing below the planting that we, the contractor planting. In, in your opinion, will, will that slow the build up on the top? I think, you know, because what we're, I mean, it's not gonna, it's not gonna stop it, but it could slow it, because what we're seeing is definitely the sand comes across the berm and it's hitting the sand fencing and it's falling like three feet behind it. And that's what we've seen with the two rows of sand fencing. And Merrick, you can chime in anytime if you want to add anything to this. Um, but, you know, there's other anomalies where it's like, well, that's kind of odd. <laughs> Could you take a couple excesses now and, and pull it down and then see, take a look at it over the next 30, 60 days? Rather than waiting till May. I mean, I think that's that's I mean, totally reasonable. It'd be interesting to so we can see. Chunk. But don't you have to get Cama to buy into it? I'm sorry, say what one more time? Does CAMA have to approve? CAMA has already said that they would consider this repair and maintenance. Okay. Good. And I've got that in writing. So would it be feasible to do a couple of excesses right now and pull it down and see what happens? Well, we've got one. We could do a couple extras. But, but we, take into account, if you do, they do it now, there's going to be no foot traffic. And you're still in and the windy, windy time of year with a lot of yeah, stuff moving, so I don't yeah. really know. We'll use it as a test. Yeah, you can do it as a test. test. I mean, in, in that particular yeah. case, we were going to wait until, like Sandy said, right before Easter, uh, or right after Easter to do it, which is right I mean, before the onset. It, there's I, mean, no re I mean, there's no reason why we couldn't do a, need a couple uh, more and, well, right, and test it. I actually think that's probably not a bad idea just to get the technique the slope, the consistency down, especially with the contractor that we're working with, and so that he has a good gauge as to what we're looking for. Like, I honestly, when I saw what they, what happened at Flight Drive, I was like, oh, that's too much. But that was on Monday, and literally we went back on Tuesday, and it had changed already. So um, I think it's not a bad idea to, 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 do, to do several locations, and especially with the different gr sand. Like, Spindrift has a different, consistency than flight drive does so we can see how they're evolving differently. Sandy, do we have two different cases? One is where we've got sand fencing that parallels the, the walkway and the build up with it versus the sand fencing that we we put in that's at an angle. <clears throat> and is there a difference? So, so in the past when we've done sand fencing, there were a few areas where we actually did oyster catcher. Can I say oyster catcher again? Where we actually did the sand fence parallel that, that right. marks the whole access. Just like oyster catcher, go one more or go, yeah, one more, yeah, one more. Yeah, so it was just like this. And it, we wrote we the whole way up, and it kept the access actually open, and and did exactly what this was doing was moving sand side. up on either side, but also right in the middle. And this I thought was going to be a question, and Sandy and I talked about it. She goes, I don't think so. When we went back and walked it. There's a little spot right here at the bottom, but foot traffic will take care of that very quickly. And whereas none of the other accesses we've done that. Um, one of the other things that we well, and I would I would just interject there that 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 is that a community access only. You can't do that at private accesses. Extend the fence. You can't take sand fencing all the way down as a you know like a as a, as as a, a path. path. You can only do that at community accesses. But it, it, it changes a lot because just on the south side of this, there's not as much sand accumulation. The sand is. is it's accumulated quite a bit right in through here and on the south side of it, uh, on the south side of the access, but 30 feet away, not as much sand accumulation as we've had everywhere else. Yeah, I think, hang on, I think I might have a picture of that. You know, I think one of the advantages of, of at least experimenting with it. Here, here is a perfect example of what he's talking about. Yeah. That sand fencing that's in the forefront of this picture to the right is at that access. That's Oyster Catcher. This is on the yeah. south side of Oyster Catcher. And so if you see this, it doesn't have as much sand accumulation as we did right at Oyster Catcher with a lot of fence right around their access. It's created sort of its own and, little berm. And I will tell you, in my, in my recollection serves me correctly, at 149 Bufflehead, where she put in several rows of sand fencing, you see a large amount of buildup of sand at the sand fencing, and then it drops off beyond the sand fencing because it's, it's capturing it, but not continuing on. 
Coming back to my point, I think one of the advantages if we we do some experimentation now, totally. it gives owners, you know, people more time to be able to to deal with it as the summer comes. If in fact we are going to have to have structures to get over it, I mean, if we're going to pull it down, it's just going to keep coming back. You know, the solution doesn't work, and would give us more time to in fact change the ordinance and allow people to Absolutely. do what needs to be done. But I think having an, having another season to deal with this sure. to see how it evolves. Um, a lot of money involved in this, so. Let me go back. You're you saying say pull same. it down. Are you meaning mechanically pull it down or pull yeah. some of the sand fencing down? Yeah. Yeah. No. Just the, the bump, the bump in the sand. Just the sand. And you don't Just think that removing some sections of sand fencing here and there would? Uh, well, again, it gets into. Yeah. I know, I know. It's a, it's a, the, the, it's a card it's not, game. It's, it's not like shooting up in the no, air. Where it's going to land. No, the it's question like, though is, you, you don't know where it's going to land. I know. I mean, because I, I mean, I sail and I paddleboard, and when I do both, you can see there's gusts of wind that come across the water, and so sometimes you're like, whoa, that's a big puff. Well, that puff's hitting here today, not hitting over there. but it's not hitting over there. So you know, you're going to see those fluctuations from day to day, yeah. depending on which way the wind's blowing, depending on where those gusts are hitting. This is not black and white. <laughs> <No>. John knows. <laughs> Merrick, are you saying that the parallel fencing, fencing builds up more sand than, than the staggered fencing that we've been using? Uh, when it comes to in the middle of the walkway. Are you talking about parallel or perpendicular to the... Pardon? Are you talking about parallel, parallel across the top of the dune or perpendicular? Yeah. No. Per so you're talking about perpendicular coming down the access. The oyster catcher, which is parallel to the to the walkway, as opposed to in many of the others, it's staggered like we have it. It's we, we quite possible. More in one way than we are the other way. But there's a lot of circumstances at that access that are different than others, in that both property owners on either side of that access put in several rows of sand fencing. So you have basically a lot of accumulation, and it may just be that they it fell in between those accesses, and in between that access because there's sand fencing on either side. That's what I think we're trying to say is there's no good solution on where the sand fencing should go um, other than it will stop the sand to some extent. One, one of the things that we discussed was actually putting the sand fence down at the foot of the berm. The problem with that was if, she should, if you remember the picture of the street signs, the access signs that we had, mm -hmm. when we put those in, they were five feet above the surface. Mm -hmm. So five feet of this was exposed. This is about two feet now. So that says that there's three feet of sand that's accumulated there, not just around the sign, but all the way up. And so in a couple areas, it's even more than that. If we and put the sand fence out, would it have it accumulated or would we have just put out a bunch of sand fence for nothing? Um, well, some, it, some people have put that third row in. They did, and, and that's where we're seeing, you see a, a large amount of sand accumulation in those areas, and then just north of it, you're seeing less accumulation. So, you know, if you were to go that route, where do you pick those locations that you're going to put additional sand fencing to stop it from going to the north, and, and is it going to stop it from going west? Would you do it less frequently? Well, Maybe, yeah. I think, yeah. that's, I think that's, yeah. I mean, spacing may be like 10 feet. 30 or, feet. We, we, we already spaced 10 feet apart. Oh, we got so, Yeah, space them up more. Because, I, yeah, I think you really yeah. want to try to keep it down on the beach yeah. rather than it, up It would on make the sense. Ground. Yeah. Down I mean, on the beach. I think you want to keep it on the beach as much as you can, so I would be in favor of, of more sand fencing eastward just so that it holds it a little bit even. But Merrick, when did you put those in again? When did those those signs go in? They went in right after the nourishment yeah. was completed. Okay. Street signs. Yeah, right in after the nourishment. And so, I mean, if you're out there now and look at some of them, literally there's about a foot and a half. I know, and they look like, little, they look like hazards actually, like step stumps. Yeah. They're gonna go away soon. They'll come back out. <laughs> They'll be fixed. They'll we'll come pull them out. Merrick is lost. Um, but, yeah, I, I would I would be in favor for more planting and more sand fencing, and I think we should definitely put that in the budget. Well, that's my if, opinion. If our objective is to trap the sand down there, then that's what we should be doing. 
So am I so. hearing that you'd want another row, uh, uh, well, that's another row spaced farther apart? I spaced right. further apart down there. Right. Yeah. Lower, closer there. to the berm. You, got, I mean, you guys are looking at it every day. You're our eyes down there. Do you think that's I mean, the best, the best looking guess? Looking at the way the sand is blowing and accumulating with the sand fencing, I mean, I think, you know, we cut the cost in half, do half the sand fencing at a lower, lower. Uh, closer to the berm, and then maybe catch it down there. Hopefully not covering up the beach grass that we just planted. Below, the better off we are. Yeah, above. That's going to come back out through three feet. It is. But meanwhile, you have a problem today. You've got the second berm, right? Oh, we got a problem. We got to deal with that first. I mean, that's what you're. That's what you're basically saying, correct? That's that's definitely our most immediate concern. I mean, somehow you got to get that knocked down, or you're going to have to allow structures. Yes. So. I mean, I think rather than changing any ordinances or anything like that, I think we, we need to, in fact, first look at getting that berm knocked down. Yeah. And then solutions to that. So I think, it's, I think we're doing both. I think we're knocking that berm down and looking at that third row fence. So you want yeah, a couple yeah. more? I agree. A couple more test sites for knocking down the berm. I mean, I think we ought to do that personally. Yeah. But if you need before Easter, heck, that's April 1st. So that's yeah. Yeah. So we should do like two or three more test sites. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'll get with Chris. Do, do the dunes, right? Space them up from north to south. Well, we'll we'll spread yeah. them out. Yeah. We picked that one because it was uh, easily accessible. It was close to Sound Sea. Close to Sound Sea. We got on the beach very easily. This time we'll we'll pick a different one. We're going to use different equipment. Well, and we'll we'll look we'll we'll space it. We'll we'll do something down near Spyglass because that sand is a little different. Um, we'll do something in the middle, and then we'll, we'll definitely we'll give you some examples maybe at the next council meeting. And, and, and the other Are we thing? adding sand fencing? <laughs> we added. Yeah, is there still? Think we, yeah. we we need to decide relatively quickly on the sand fencing what we want to do. When is when is it uh, appropriate to put the sand fencing in? Anytime and now. now, now or but then not after say. Uh, April. I mean, you can do it in the summer, but I don't. You're not going to accumulate like you do in the winter months. Yeah, the, the best times like September, October. Okay. But I mean, yeah, I, I've got like you heard me earlier. I'm telling people on the uh, south side of the pier, get your sand fencing in. The wind is blowing right now, and this is your best opportunity or option, short of a beach push, to accumulate sand back in that area that's been eroded. Right now, is the, the quicker we do it, the better off we are. I took a video a couple weeks ago, granted I was on top of the dune, and you could just see the sand blowing across the top. So if it's blowing across the top, it's blowing across the berm too. Mm -hmm. Remember, so, March comes in like a lion and out like work. a lamb. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd yeah. like to move that we yeah. uh, adopt a third row of sand fencing, uh, spacing to be determined by Sandy and by their skills. Yes. By the team. Yeah, I, I'm definitely thinking we would double the distance between fencing do or it maybe as triple. As possible. And I uh, triple and do it. If we triple point, it, we need an authorization for it. We'll cut around. it by a third, two thirds versus. It may not have to be that high. That's why I was saying triple instead of double it. Are we talking about a third row th for the whole two miles? Yeah. But not as frequent, but, but like large, larger staggers between them. So either a third or a half. I, I, I say a half of what we've done. We're going we're gonna to leave a wider space. We'll leave a wider space at the accesses. So as we discussed, it makes more sense that it won't be building up right in front of the access and then concentrate most of the fence in between accesses so that, you know, it'll be, it'll be less fence. What do you think you're going to we can spread them out just a little bit further. I think we're going to be okay. You okay? Do we need to, to amend that motion to include the scraping project, or we just? We do. Or is that just? I, I think I think we can do the the. I think we we have consensus to to experiment with the with the scraping and just tell us to go ahead and go forward and uh, implement that sand fencing and I think we probably have enough revenue. You just have to remember when I do my financial projections tomorrow that there might be a couple numbers that are off a little bit, but um, but uh, um, but I think we may have enough money to add that and, and be fine. Well, I, I put a motion on the floor. I've got a motion on the floor yep. for the sand fencing. So to put the third row in based on their yeah. design. So you don't think we want that amendment on testing the scraping? 
No, he says it. That's just a, I, I think we're good with that. We'll, 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 we'll do that. All right, so we got a motion on the floor. Any discussion on the motions on the floor? No other Thank you all for your effort out there. I mean, giving us this knowledge is invaluable. Any other discussion? Nope. All in favor of the motion on the floor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes 5 to 0. Thank you. Both Thank you. Much. And I would just like to mention that we're having a beach planting on Friday <laughs> at Whistling Swan. Mr. Burdick, Sorry, I, I we're going to be at Whistling Swan on Friday at 1 o'clock. Planting? Yeah. Yes. One and we'll also have one next Tuesday. And I have Kate, Kittle of the Hills Rotary Club coming on Sunday. And they are going to plant um, Sound Sea and Acorn at Oak Avenue. And then uh, we're, we're coming to the end. Sandy, I'd love to be there, but I'm in the post office. Huh? I just want to, I can't say enough about Sandy's um, influence, not only in Duck, but in the on the entire Outer Banks for being, I'm calling her a trailblazer. Maybe there's a better, you know, <laughs> word, but that's what comes to mind because she's leading the way for a lot of community involvement. Um, Absolutely. Sandy's a volunteer number one over there, but uh, it's incredible what you can get done and not for a lot of money and just uh, boom, all of a sudden. It's it's really great. So you are leading the way and inspiring a lot of communities to get involved. Rotary Club from Kill Devil Hills, but Kitty Hawk was out there last yep. um, Sunday. And uh, Southern Shores came out and visited us. Uh, Southern Shores Public Works came out last Friday and uh, wanted to see what we were doing, check out what we were doing, how we set it up, and... Taking all kinds of pictures, yeah. Yeah, hopefully uh, we'll see them doing it as well. Sandy, you're Thank awesome. You Thank, Thank you, Sandy. You.